Hello. Ah. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Um, so let me see. Yes. Hi. So my presentation is about ES 2016. I'm Paul Fabeg, and I work at Booking.com, um, where I'm a front-end developer. And I'm as front-end as it gets, because I rarely do something with Node.js. Just use Grunt sometimes. But I'm not here to talk about Node.js. I'm here to talk about ECMAScript 6. Well, 7, I mean, sorry. Um, I also run a meetup group called NLHTML5, which is mostly here in Amsterdam, but also around the rest of the Netherlands. Um, but you are here to listen about ECMAScript. And as Brendan Eich said it, ECMAScript was always an unwanted trade name that sounded like a skin disease. Um, which actually meant that he didn't like the name, but he, he uh, liked the rest of it. Um, so how is ECMAScript formed? It's, it's, there's a bunch of, well, mostly old white people sitting in a room talking about uh, the process, uh, talking about the specifications and making it, uh, making it happen for all the browsers. Um, and they, they do it in, in five different stages. They, do have a stage zero, which is strawman. It's, it's all the ideas that people submit and are reviewed in their TC39 meetings, um, which then leads to a formally accepted proposal in stage one, goes to stage two, which uh, then has a draft of the syntax and semantics. After that, after the spec text is complete and has at least two implementations behind the flag, like in uh, Node.js or in uh, Chrome. Um, and then it's finished. It's ready for the standard, and uh, it passes the unit tests. When it's finished, it means that it can become, uh, uh, it, it can come into the next yearly iteration of ECMAScript. Now, we've all been working for, with ECMAScript 6 for a while now. Um, so I thought, let's do a talk about ECMAScript 7, or 2016, which was a good idea, only it only came with two new things. So this means that my talk would be done within two minutes. Um, but I'll get on to that later. So ECMAScript 6, uh, 2016, or as I like to call it on a day-to-day -day basis, ECMAScript 2627th edition, the ECMAScript 2016 language specification. Uh, so that's how it's called now. Um, I don't know why. Well, I know why, but I will not get into it. So there's two things in what well, I said there are two things. And one of the things in ECMAScript 2016 is the exponentiation operator. Um, it's interesting. It's this. OK, so that was first. Well, it's, it's, it's this, and people might know it from different languages. It's, it's basically a better way to do math.pow. Um, you can make squared like this, or you can do. Uh, you can also do star star equals, and then it does does it like this. So uh, it's good. It's, it looks a little bit cleaner, and um, well, that's that's basically it. It's it's not a big improvement. It's it's just something. Um, it is supported in, in Edge and in Chrome at the moment. It's, it's in a technical preview on Safari, and it's in Node.js behind the Harmony flag. Um, so it, Edge is, is interesting because Edge is currently really up to date with all the, uh, all the ECMAScript stuff. Um, so if you want to test something out, you can al almost always test it in Edge. So the second thing is also not a very big thing. It's called array that prototype that includes, um, which basically means that you, if you want to see something in an array, you used to ha have to do it here uh, like this, and now you can do it with dot includes. Um, there are some 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 minor differences between the two, um, like index of you couldn't look for n not a number inside of a inside of an array with includes you can. Another uh, difference is that you couldn't uh, find undefined value if, it's, if it was an array like this. But some people would think, well, why includes? Why not contains? Contains makes a lot more sense. It's, well, because of Mutools. 
Um, Mutools has a thing that they, they like to uh, extend the, uh, the prototypes. And they created something called array.prototype.contains. And it basically did something, wor uh, something that wasn't supposed to be doing. You can learn two things from this. One is you should never extend your, your prototype if you're using something for a web browser. Um, because otherwise, you will get problems with specifications. And the other thing is, if you're big enough like Mootools, then uh, the specification will just bend around you. So Array the Prototype includes works on every modern browser and Node.js. Uh, so yeah, that's my talk. No, just kidding. I'm, I'll <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you uh, a little sneak preview of um, ECMAScript 2628 edition, which what, what's coming next year in ECMAScript. Well, not really, because the things I'm going to talk about are in stage four, which means that it's complete. Uh, this, the, text, uh, the, the spec text is ready, enough implementations. But it has happened in the past that it was removed from that stage just before, uh, uh, just before the, the final specification was released which actually also happened with the last time when async was supposed to be in the last iteration. So this is everything that it, that's in stage four at the moment, uh, the moment I wrote this, which was, I think, last week. So maybe something has changed so in the meantime. It's object.values and object.entries. It's string, uh, string padding. It's object.getOwnProperty descriptors and the ASIC functions, and I believe that's it. Oh, no, there's also trailing commas in function parameters, lists, and calls. I will go through these, these five things and explain a bit on how it works and why it's cool. Um, and if you want to look into it yourself, you can go to uh, the GitHub page for, from TC39. There's this finished proposals document where you can uh, find all the links to, the, to all the proposals. So object.values and object.entries, which um, I already, al always thought it was already in there, but apparently it wasn't. Um, we did have object.keys. So say you have an object, and you want to get all the keys from it. You just do object.keys, and you get an array of keys. Makes sense. Object.values, it's the same thing, only you get the values. It's not really that hard to understand. Object.entries gives you a multidimensional array with the Key, with a key value pair. Um, so yeah, that's useful if you want to loop through everything and do something like this. It's supported in, in Edge. It's supported in, I think, Chrome 54, which is probably the next version of the version after that. Uh, Firefox, the technical preview of Safari, and uh, Node and behind Harmony flags again. So string the padding. Um, is it too early to make a laugh pad joke? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll just don't do it. <laughs> string the padding. Uh, it's yeah. It's it's you can you can add something in front of a string or after a string. You can do it with pad start and pad end. It's not pad left or right because of um, right to left languages, which. Uh, then screws up the syntax a bit. So pet start adds something to the start of the string, pet end adds something to the end of the string. Um, so in the first case, it adds zeros to the start of the string until the string length is three. You can uh, use multiple strings, uh, uh, longer strings. So if you want to add something to node with JS and you want to have a length of nine, then it will become JS, JS, J. Um, pet start can also be used without a second parameter, uh, which then adds spaces. It could be very useful for tabular data uh, if you want to have everything right aligned. Well, that's basically it. So it's, it's behind flags in, in Edge and in Chrome. Uh, Firefox already has it. Safari has it in, in, in the next version, which is, I believe, this version then. Uh, Node doesn't have it yet. Um, I'm not sure. Does anyone know if it comes? No? OK. I haven't heard anything about it yet. Um, next thing is 
uh, ghetto property descriptors. So it becomes a little bit more interesting here. Um, so it's you should look at the S because without the S that was already there, you can could get a property descriptor, but not all property descriptors. Um, so for what it does, it's if you have an, an, an object with a symbol or a getter, you can just with get on property descriptors, you can get every everything from that object, which is useful if you want to copy properties into an object. Uh, with object.assign, you could do this, could do it like this. We just have two objects, and then uh, you can merge them together, sort of way. Uh, the only problem was if you had a setter or a getter, you couldn't, because uh, object.assign doesn't assign setters, getters, or symbols. Uh, with get on property descriptor, you can could get. Uh, for example, in this case, the foo, and you go, and then you got the, the setter of the foo, and then you could add it to it um, with object.assign. Uh, but, but with object.assign, as, as you see here, it, it wouldn't work. Um, so if you use a combination of uh, defined properties and get on property descriptors, it will actually, uh, wait, what am I looking at? Sorry. So, oh, yeah. So if you use object.define properties and you use your target and then add all the property descriptors, it will be copied to, to, the, uh, to the target object, which is very useful if you want to uh, merge the, the objects together. Another use case is cloning objects. Uh, you can do this with object.create, which the, you, can, you had to uh, use get prototype off and get a property descriptors, and you will have a clone of the object you wanted to uh, duplicate. This is very, well, it's reasonably supported. It's, it's, uh, it's in all the next versions of Chrome and uh, Firefox. It's in the technical preview of Safari, and it's behind Harmony Flags in Node. It's not in Edge yet. Um, they're working on it, as I, I thought. So it's coming soon. The async function. Um, this is uh, one that was supposed to be coming in ES 2016, but it's it's now hopefully coming in this next version. It's it's again in stage four, so I'm pretty confident that it will come this year. Um, I will I won't go into the extreme details of it. I will just explain the basic functionality of async. I can do an entire talk uh, just on async, which was my original idea for this talk. Um, but I will uh, just give you a little bit of an idea. Um, if you want to do something async, it's very old, very basic version. You can do something with a callback and a timeout, I guess. If you see this, you think, well, you can do it a lot easier with promises or something. But this is a very basic version, um, which you can then do something. Uh, it's not a pretty. It's not really readable. Uh, so yeah, as I said, in came promises. Promises made it a little bit easier for uh, to, to work it. Um, but still, it's it's not as readable as you might want it, and it misses some functionalities. Um, what did I do? Uh, yeah. So async. Uh, with async functions, you, you just prepend function with async. You, uh, the, the, the function that returns a promise, you, uh, when you call it, you say await, and then just waits for that function to, to uh, resol uh, the promise to resolve, and then it will continue to, to the ne uh, next line. It's very useful. It's, it's very readable. Um, and this is really, really, the really basics of a await. There are a lot more about it. Um, if you, oh, you can also await another time if you want to do that. And you can, it's, it logs as, as how you expect it to log. Uh, one thing you want to know is uh, you want to uh, always catch the errors because uh, if, you re if you, your promise rejects, then it will silently. Uh, 
Uh, it, will, it will silently throw an error, so you will not see it in your uh, console. Not sure if that happens in Node.js as well, but it, it does happen in all the browsers. Uh, so you want to you want to catch you want to catch the errors within that promise. But if you want to know more about async, this is, uh, PonyFu has an excellent article about it. It's uh, it has a lot of useful resources and how you can use async with generators and everything. So uh, you, if you want to know more about it, you might want to check it out. It's not very well supported yet. It's, it is an edge. Uh, it is in Chrome behind Flex. So it has the two implementations uh, they need for, for it to become a standard. I haven't heard from any other browsers or Node on, on uh, if they're working on it or if it's coming. But I'm pretty sure it will come soon. And lastly, there's, finally, there's uh, trailing commas in function parameters, lists, and calls. They use, there was already, uh, you can al already add a trailing comma in objects and arrays, but it wasn't uh, possible to do it in functions, which is now possible. Um, there are, not, not everyone likes it, but I guess I, I'm not a really big fan of it as well, but it's, it's good for, um, I don't know. Why is it good for? Can anyone call, tell me why it's good for? Version control, maybe, something like that, copy-pasting. I, I don't know. I don't like it, but it's, it's in there. It, it's in Edge. It's in Safari 10. Um, so also, this is probably coming. So I'll, I'll, for the last few minutes, I'll go through the, the, the final, uh, the, the things that are in, in Canada right now, so which could still become a, uh, a stage four. Uh, so before the end of the year. There's SIMD, JS, the APIs, and the polyfill, which uh, you can use if you do a lot of calculations, game development, maybe something like that. It's really useful. It's, it in increases your calculations extremely well, extremely. Um, there's a revision of the uh, toString um, function. It's not very big. Uh, I, there's also not, not a lot of explanation on it, what, it's, what the revision is. So I haven't really looked into it yet, but I'm not really sure. Um, yeah, they're lifting the template re literal restriction, and that's about it. So if you want to see what the status is, you have these two uh, links. There's, uh, the, the top one is, is the status. The other one are all the specs. There's, there's a lot of information about it. Uh, if you want to know what, uh, uh, what's supported right now, what's supported in the future, you can go to node.green. It has a great compatibility table. I only learned about it today. So it's, uh, it's, it's basically the, the same tests that are on Kangask, but it also adds the, uh, uh, the nightly build of, of Node. So it's, it's pretty great. As I said, PonyFu is a great website for resources. And Tuality is also, also has a lot of good articles about ECMAScript's future. They all, he also has a book about ECMAScript 6, and he's, he's, uh, probably he's going to come out with a new book soon. So I'm Paul Verbeek. I work at Booking.com. If you want to know more about working at Booking.com, you can come to me. I hope you liked the presentation. If you did not like the presentation, I work at Expedia. This is my Twitter handle. This is my other Twitter handle. This is my email address if you want to know. This is my ICQ number. Do you have any questions?